Shalom. Call Laimla Yahweh. The Hashem Yahweh Shai. The Hashem Urka Kadash. All praises be to the Most High Yahweh. In the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that is scattered abroad, and double honor and respect to the elders and to the apostles of Great Millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson. They shall rule the nations. So I just want to go briefly into this lesson, talking about the promises of the kingdom of heaven. The promises concerning the kingdom of heaven. So the kingdom of heaven is nothing like what we've been taught growing up in the, in the church. <coughs> Excuse me. Really, it's talking about the Lord's people ruling over the nations as in the old days. So I'm going to go into this, and the elites know this. This is a screenshot from the 1968 movie, Planet of the Apes. <coughs> the apes represent the Israelites. So this is a movie what you would call satire and ridicule, which is making mockery of the promises to Jacob, the Israelites. <clears throat> so this is what this movie is doing. And only the well-learned can pick up on the subliminal messages of this movie. <clears throat> the messages that are geared towards our conscience. What does this movie represent? It represents the rulership under the tabernacle of David. Notice the ape in the background. He has the Edomite in captivity. And behind him, that is a mockery of Yahabashai, which is an ape. And there's a line in the movie, can't remember which episode it was. <clears throat> but he said, I'm going to read the 29th scroll from our greatest ape of all. Our lawgiver, which is Yahweh Shai, our Lord and Savior, who had delegated authority to Moses. <clears throat> anyway, I just wanted to highlight that. <clears throat> Let's go here. I'm going to make this small. <clears throat> Excuse me. 1968 movie, Planet of the Apes. <clears throat> So under Moses, the Israelites was able to subdue the other nations, being helped by the angel of the Lord, which is Yahawashai. <clears throat> See how much of this I'm going to read. Wanderings in the wilderness. So if we're outside of the wilderness, then we, if we're outside of the motherland, excuse me, we are in the wilderness. Galatians 4 and 26. Jerusalem is the motherland, not Africa. <clears throat> Let's go to De Deuteronomy 2 and 1. <clears throat> the book of Deuteronomy chapter 2. <clears throat> Let's go to verse 2. And the Lord spake unto me, saying, Ye have compassed this mountain long enough. Turn you northward and command thou the people, saying, Ye are to pass through the coast of your brethren, the children of Esau, which dwell in Seir. And they shall be afraid of you. Take ye good heed unto yourselves, therefore, so the Bible says what has been or the thing that has been is that which shall be and that which shall and that which was done is that which shall be done. There is no new thing under the sun. So even in the last days, the nations are afraid of Israel 
calling on the most holy name, Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, and waking up to our heritage and coming back to the Lord's word. <clears throat> so we're seeing a gradual buildup to this point again. Deuteronomy 2, verse 4. <clears throat> and command thou the people, saying, Ye are to pass through the coast of your brethren, the children of, <coughs> excuse me, and command thou the people, saying, Ye are to pass through the coast of your brethren, the children of Esau, which dwell in Seir, and they shall be afraid of you. Take ye good heed unto yourselves, therefore meddle not with them, for I will not give you of their land, no, not so much as a foot breath, because I have given Mount Seir unto Esau for a possession. Let's go down here to verse 22. So every nation is going to be put back in their lot at the return of Yehoshai. <laughs> There's a lot of land that every nation is a portion. But the other nations are going to be shown some limited mercy with the exception of Esau Edom, the exception of the Edomites. <clears throat> Let's read this one. Deuteronomy 2, verse 21. Let's go up to 20. That also was accounted a land of giants. Giants dwell therein in old time, and the Amorites called them the Zanzimims. Let's go here to verse 21. A people great and many and tall as the Anakims, but the Lord destroyed them before them, and they succeeded them and dwelt in their stead, as he did to the children of Esau, which dwelt in Seir, when he destroyed the Horms from before them, and they succeeded them and dwelt in their stead even unto this day. <clears throat> Let's look at this term, Horam. So the other nations are being subdued because the Lord has favor on his people, the Israelites. <clears throat> Let's look at this term, Horams, comes from the Hebrew. Strong's age, 2752. Hori, Hori. Cave dweller. The Tragedite, or Korite, an aboriginal Idumian. Horams, Horites. So you had descendants of Ham originally in that area, but it was taken over by the Edomites, Idumians, <clears throat> Horite, cave dweller, the inhabitants of Mount Seir, inhabitants of Edom in later times. <clears throat> so they dwelt in the holes and the caves of the earth. Look up that movie, Quest for Fire. The movie Quest for Fire. I watched it as a kid. <clears throat> and click on images if you can. But anyway, these other nations are going to fear the Israelites at the judgment of the Lord and him showing his favor upon his anointed. Elect, Deuteronomy 2 and 25. This day will I begin to put the dread of thee and the fear of thee upon the nations that are under the whole heaven who shall hear report of thee and shall tremble and be in anguish because of thee. <coughs> See? So even... If we fast forward unto today, 
The Bible says, great fear fell upon them which saw them. So the other, na the other nations around the world that are following these lessons, following the prophetic scriptures, are consumed with terror, terror and fear. They're losing sleep at night. Go from there. See, we'll go ahead and get that in the New Testament. I think it's Revelation 11. Revelation 11, verse 11. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. See? So, <coughs> we're seeing this repeat of the Lord beginning to show his power in Jacob. Which starts with what? His word. Matter of fact, let's go here. Ecclesiastes 8 and 4. Where the word of a king is, there is power. And who may say unto him, what doest thou? So no man can go against the ancient scrolls, this holy word. This is contributing to great fear because the Bible cannot be gainsaid nor resisted. One moment. <clears throat> Luke 21 and 15. The book of Luke chapter 21, verse 14. Settle it therefore in your hearts not to meditate before what ye shall answer. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries shall not be able to to gainsay nor resist. So the Lord is driving this train. The Lord is navigating this ship. This is the ark that the elect are being gathered to, which is the temple of the preaching of his word. So we're in a little sanctuary in these last days. Let's go to Deuteronomy 12. And 29. Gonna go to 28. Deuteronomy 12, verse 28. Observe and hear all these words which I command thee that I may go. Deuteronomy 12 and 28. Observe and hear all these words which I command thee that it may go well with thee and with thy children after thee forever. Even thou, when thou doest that which is good and right in the sight of the Lord thy God, when the Lord thy God shall cut off the nations from before thee, whether thou goest to possess them, and thou succeedest them, and dwell in their land. So these other nations are being subjugated under the cosmos, which means orderly arrangement from the Greek cosmos. So this is the new governing authority of the Illuminati of the real new world order that's being set back up under our Lord, Yahweh Shai, followed by King David, the 12 apostles and the rest of the kings or the rest of the 144,000. <clears throat> Deuteronomy 12 and 28 again. 
observe and hear all these words, which I command thee, that it may go well with thee and with thy children after thee forever, when thou doest that which is good and right in the sight of the Lord thy God. So this is our power. This is the source of our power. Doing the will of the heavenly father. Rebellion is our kryptonite in which we are taken down and subdued under the nations. When the Lord thy God shall cut off the nations from before thee, whither thou goest to possess them, and thou succeedest them and dwellest in their land. Take heed to thyself that thou be not snared by following them after that they be destroyed from before thee, and that thou inquire not after their gods, saying, How did these nations serve their gods? Even so will I do likewise. So this is how we got snared in the old days. Curiosity killed the cat, trying to take on the customs, the rituals, the traditions of the uh, adversaries before us, the other nations. So the Israelites are not going to go off again because the Bible says that our bodies are going to be changed and we're going to take on the full-blown spirit of the Lord. <clears throat> Go to Genesis 27 and 28. <clears throat> Look in Genesis chapter 27, verse 28. Therefore, God give thee of the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth and plenty of corn and wine. So the promises are to Jacob. The supernatural abilities and supernatural Extraterrestrial strength is promised to Jacob. Our forefather Jacob wrestled with an angel, and his name was changed to Yashar Allah or Yasharala. He is a prince of the power. So the full majesty or the full blown levels, leveling up. Jacob's going to level up to take on the full characteristics of of the Lord's lowercase and God's lowercase g on the earth. So Jake is the real G that's going to be turned up or leveled up under the blessings under the new covenant. Right now we're under a transitory grace period. We don't have chains and shackles on the Edomites. Neither have we subdued the, under the other nations. <clears throat> well, this is the blessing from Isaac, which is Yahawashai. Genesis 27, verse 28. Therefore, God give thee of the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth and plenty of corn and wine. Let people serve thee and nations bow down to thee. I thought we're all equal in God's eyes. Hills to the nizzle, to the hills to the no. So Jacob represent the lords of the earth, the governors. Let people serve thee and nations bow down to thee. Be Lord over thy brethren and let thy mother's sons bow down to thee. Curse be every one that curseth thee, and bless be he that blesseth thee. So Esau was giving a cursed lot in multiple ways. One, he's reviling the gods, the sons of, of the Most High, the Israelites. Two, he was giving a blessing of the sword which he has used to murder. So he is in a perpetual world or lot of abominations. 
He is the embodiment of sin, that man of sin, a walking abomination. And he eats bloody meat. See? And is a natural idolater, a warlock, and a sorcerer. <laughs> so he is he is in a position where there is no way out. So he was giving this trap lot. And this is why he's angry. So the other nations are going to bow down to the Israelites. And the elites know this. Where's that image at? I mean, you can't make this stuff up. Look at this. 1968 movie, Planet of the Apes. And Charlton Heston is representing the Edomites in captivity. And their women are going to be concubines. <clears throat> I mean, come on now. I missed something here. I need to go back and get it. Let's look at this phrase, bow down. We got to get it. <clears throat> They're going to serve thee. We'll go there first. Comes from the Hebrew. Strong's H5647. Avad. Avad. Compel. Labor. The other nations are going to be laborers. They're going to be the plowmen, slaves, service, server. So they're going to be brake masons. They're going to be worshipers. Oh, man. So the other nations cannot serve the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, unless through the sons of Jacob, which is under Yahweh, following the will of the Most High through our mediator. So they're going to worship Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh through his men. They're going to be taught the laws, statutes, and commandments <clears throat> under the sons of Jacob. Laborers. Tillers. So they're going to be tillers of the field. <clears throat> See? Let's keep going. I want to get another one. They're going to bow down. Bow down comes from the Hebrew. Strong's H seventy eight twelve, shacha, shacha. Reverence, reverence is another word for worship. Wow, to be in obedience, to worship. It's right here. Worship. Bow down and homage to royalty or the Most High. So they're going to serve Jacob, their Lord, and lords, governors, the men of the tabernacle of David. <clears throat> this, is this is beautiful. Water break. Salakia, Genesis 27 and 29. Let people serve thee and nations bow down to thee. Be Lord over thy brethren and let thy mother's sons bow down to thee. Curse be every one that curseth thee and bless be he that blesseth thee. So the nations that don't serve Jacob are going to be put to death. Let's get Isaiah 60.
Isaiah 60, verse 10. And the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls, and their kings shall minister unto thee. For in my wrath I smote thee, but in my favor have I had mercy on thee. <clears throat> Let's jump down to verse 12. For the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. Yea, those nations shall be utterly wasted. Let's look up perish. <clears throat> perish comes from the Hebrew. Strong's H6 Avad Avad So they're going to be done away with. They're going to be put to death if reviling the gods or going against the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. See right here. To die. To be exterminated. So we're going to see, look, kill, exterminate. So this is going to be the fear of the Lord being put over these nations. They're going to serve the Israelites in fear and trembling. This is going to be a totalitarian style of government. One way, following after the laws, statutes, and commandments of the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Let's go to Revelation 2 and 25. But that which ye have already, hold fast till I come. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works until the end, to him will I give power over the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I receive of my father. So the Israelites serve Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, with fear and trembling. The other nations are going to serve Jacob with fear and trembling or die. Let's go to Psalms 2. <clears throat> the book of Psalms, chapter 2, verse 11. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. See? Let's go to 10. Be wise now, therefore, O ye kings, be instructed, ye judges of the earth. So these are the up and coming lords, the lordship. This is the house of nobility. The new Davidic dynasty is emerging. As we speak, <clears throat> Revelation 2 and 26. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I receive of my father. <laughs> they showed us in the 1968 movie Planet of the Apes. They show the apes with rods beating on the Edomites in that movie. <clears throat> but really it represents a scepter which represents dominion or reign of rulership. This is going to be a kingdom, not a queendom that we're under right now, under the daughter of Babylon, Lady Liberty. So a kingdom insinuates kings, lords, priests, men. <clears throat> Let's go to Psalms 49 and 12. 
Nevertheless, man, being in honor, abideth not. He is like the beast that perish. So we're under the beast man, a beast system under the Edomites. So it is vile. It is wicked. And now it is under decay because it's built upon unrighteousness, cruelty, wickedness. Psalms 49 and 13. This, their way, is their folly, yet their posterity approve their sayings. Like sheep, they are laid in the grave. Death shall feed on them, and the upright shall have dominion over them in the morning, and their beauty shall consume in the grave from their dwelling. So the Edomites are going into the valley of the dry bones, the graves. So they're going to be dried up with thirst. Servants, handmaids, slaves. <clears throat> so to be in the grave, they're going to be ignorant. They're going to lose their language. They're going to lose knowledge of the great empire that they once ruled over. Being kings, they're going to be cut off from all that and have no name in the street other than servant. So one of the things you do in war, you separate the elders from the younger. You, take, you cut off the leadership, cut off the head. And what else? They're not giving permission to speak. They're going to lose their ability to communicate. They're going to lose their language over the course of time. <clears throat> Nevertheless, man, being in honor, abideth, abideth not. He is like the beasts that perish. This their way is their folly, yet their posterity approve their sayings. Like sheep, they are laid in the grave. Death shall feed on them, and the upright shall have dominion over them in the morning, and their beauty shall consume in the grave from their dwelling. But God will redeem my soul from the power of the grave, for he shall receive me. So the elect are going to be caught up into the clouds which are the chariots of the Lord, the so-called UFOs. <laughs> Let's close out here. <clears throat> First Corinthians 6 and 1. Dare any of you, having a matter against another, go to the law before the unjust and not before the saints. So the Israelite men are made to be rulers, leaders, Decision makers, judges. Verse 2. Do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters? <laughs> so the Israelites are going to judge the nations and subject them under the laws, statutes, and commandments of our Heavenly Father. But judgment starts with the house of Israel. Verse 3. Know ye not that we shall judge angels how much more things that pertain to this life. So we're seeing our leaders starting with the apostles and elders that are teaching and leading the way towards Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai following the instruction book. And we're seeing leaders that are emerging underneath the doctrine of the apostles. <clears throat> but the Israelites are being built up to judge the world. The Bible says that the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom. That's Daniel 7 and 18 Daniel 7 and 27. Let's read this. Surat 4 and 
Let's go to 12. We got to go up to 11. Wisdom exalteth her children and layeth hold of them that seek her. So the kings of the earth are being groomed, cultivated to be lords. So this is a leadership development course, if you will. In order to rule, the Israelite men must be restored through wisdom, brought back to life in their right mind. <clears throat> wisdom exalted her children and layeth hold of them that seek her. He that loveth her loveth life, and they that seek to her early shall be filled with joy. He that holdeth her fast shall inherit glory, and wheresoever she entereth, the Lord will bless. So the glory is the entering into the kingdom. New bodies. A new spiritual makeover. Mindset being changed. Supernatural abilities. Being able to leap one building in a single bound. They get that from the Bible. Yasha Allah, he is a prince of the power, which are the Israelites, Israel. So that glory starts with a makeover, putting on the garments of eternal wisdom. <clears throat> he that holdeth her fast shall inherit glory, and wheresoever she entereth, the Lord will bless. They that serve her shall minister to the Holy One. One and them that love her, the Lord doth love. Let's read it again. So this is the Lord's counsel under him. His new cabinet. These are his counselors. But don't counsel him that counsel the nations. They that serve her shall minister to the Holy One, and them that love her, the Lord doth love. Whoso giveth ear unto her shall judge the nations, and he that attendeth unto her shall dwell securely, shall judge the nations. See? So the Lord's counsel are his men that he has raised up and has educated, has taught, has groomed to be the world leaders, the new world leaders. <clears throat> Getting another one on that. I think it's Wisdom of Solomon 3 and 9. So judge the nations. <clears throat> yeah. Wisdom of Solomon three. Let's go to verse seven. Let's go to verse. We got to go up. But the souls of the righteous are in the hand of God, and there shall no torment touch them. In the sight of the unwise, they seem to die, and their departure is taken for misery. And they're going from us to be utter destruction, but they are in peace. So our bodies die, but our spirits are eternal. The Lord can raise up whomever he pleases. Or whom he wants. There is no death. But transition. <clears throat> For though they be punished. In the sight of men. Yet is their hope full. Of immortality. And this is why this wisdom. Is important. Because this is partaking. In, in the Lord's meal. This is supping with him. 
in the gift of eternal life, eating from the table of heavenly manna. So this starts a spiritual change. <clears throat> Verse 5, And having been a little chastised, they shall be greatly rewarded, for God proved them and found them worthy for himself. As gold in the furnace have he tried them and received them as a burnt offering. So the true leaders that are being developed and prepared to rule in the kingdom to come are making their bodies a living sacrifice by risking their lives to teach this truth diligently. So these are sacrifices that are acceptable unto Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. The current fishermen are going to become hunters come judgment day. And they're doing this diligently. So it's not hard to see who the Lord's men are that are already making sacrifices. Every lesson is a sacrifice. Every street ministry is a sacrifice. As gold in the furnace, have he tried them and received them as a burnt offering. And in the time of their visitation, they shall shine and run to and from like sparks among the stubble. New bodies, the elect are going to come down in the midst of chaos after being crowned by Yahweh Shai and take the kingdom. They shall judge the nations and have dominion over the people and their Lord shall reign forever. <clears throat> they that put their trust in him shall understand the truth and such as be faithful in love shall abide with him for grace and mercy is to his saints, and he have care for his elect. But the ungodly shall be punished according to their own imaginations, which have neglected the righteous and forsaken the Lord. <laughs> so they're going to go into slavery, these other nations. They're going to be judged by being subdued under captivity. For whoso despiseth wisdom and nurture, he is miserable, and their hope is in vain. For whoso despiseth wisdom and nurture, he is miserable, and their hope is vain, their labors unfruitful, and their works unprofitable. So the wicked are going to be in torment. This is why the rich man, when he died, and saw the new kingdom, he was begging for a drop of water to be touched on his tongue, which represent him begging for mercy. It is, it's, not, it's not literal. He was asking for a drop of water in hell. Are you crazy? He was asking for mercy. <clears throat> How in the world can there be a, some cold water in a place called hell somewhere? So the rich man or the wicked, the Edomites, they're going to be begging for mercy. But their pleas for mercy and their cries for help is going to fall on deaf ears. The Bible says, he that hath not shown any mercy shall receive no mercy. And in Isaiah 47, they have not showed Jacob the Lord's heritage, any mercy. So the nations are going to be ruled over with a rod of iron, just like the Bible says. They're going to dwell in torment and misery. Hopefully this lesson has been edifying our praises to Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai. Bahashim Rakadash, double honor and respect to the elders, to the apostles and great millstone. 
See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Barack a thumb. Kwame Yashawala. And the Bad Babal. We got next, Lord willing. Shalom.